Welcome to Face to Facts. I am Nick Face. We hope you all had a great Thanksgiving weekend. To my right, once again, Brad Augustinelli, fresh from New York. Good to be here. How are you? Fine. <laughs> Came just in time for our wonderful <laughs> show of Face to Facts. Indeed. We've had an interesting week, basically, in mm -hmm. sports that have gone on. We're going to start our day off with the uh, NFL. We're going to lead off with the Patriots to uh, start things today. Right now, the Patriots are 9-2. and two. All said and done at this point right now in the season. They've had a really good beginning, I think, of the season mm -hmm. when they went 3-1 and one on their stretch. Well, Tom. Uh, we have Tom Brady now back, which is a great thing for a lot of fans in New England. Um, the major thing, though, is there's a lot of people that have different opinions on the Patriots right now as a team. Mm -hmm. So I want to lead off with kind of a, an opinion on what maybe I think of the Patriots and what you think of the Patriots. So I want to hear what you think so far. Yeah, over the years, coming from kind of an outside perspective, I've yeah. kind of, um, I've thought, oh, this, this is not going to be, you know, they, the Patriots kind of look down, sort of pedestrian, mediocre. This isn't going to, this is going to be the year when they kind of go one and done or fall out. And every year it seems they prove many people wrong in that respect. So yeah. although Tim, they, didn't, they didn't look great yesterday, the Jets have played them decently the last couple of years, especially with Ryan Fitzpatrick. Yep. So sure, they don't look great. They're a little banged up, but I'm not ready to, to say that. I can't say they're not going to go to the AFC Championship or Super Bowl yet. Mm -hmm. So I still think they're on a decent enough track where they can get it back together and, and, uh, and move forward as, as they, and they and their fans would probably want. To me, that's what it, that's what it seems like. I watched a game yesterday, very frustrated with what I saw. Fair enough. And I'm seeing a continuation of a team that's in deep trouble, mm -hmm. I think. Some of you may be saying, yes, the pay I, they are 9-2. and two. Yes, I understand that. But as a whole, on a unit, there's a lot of concerns. Okay. First and foremost, I want to look at the defense for a second. And a couple weeks ago, Got a real shakeup on the defense when Jamie Collins was traded over to the Browns. Yep. Obviously, there was something internally going on there mm -hmm. between could have been the defensive coaches, Belichick, uh, playing time, money, contract, contract all that yeah. jazz. Mm -hmm. Collins was a big factor for the Patriots for a couple years now with developing into a solid guy with a good reputation on the defense. Mm -hmm. Eliminate him from the equation. How does that defense get any better? In my opinion, it doesn't. Yeah. We've had internal problems with a lot of guys on this team, it seems like, including Jabal Sheard, who's been in and out of action. We've had some injuries that have had to um, make some you know, mixed matching of uh, a rotation, in a way, for the Patriots. Mm -hmm. uh, Nikovich was out for four games, and I think he's a complete shell of himself right now. Um, and one of my players who I feel deserves to be in the most overrated and most hyped up players of all time in the NFL would be Malcolm Butler. Mm. So in my eyes, this team is going nowhere without a defense. Mm -hmm. And their defense is infuriating right now. Infuriating. I don't see how this team, who was on, it's supposed to be a stick it to Goodell revenge tour, <laughs> has any business being better than... A first round team and done right now. Maybe I mean, but the thing is, who who's gonna stop them? What I mean, well, other, that's, maybe, the, that's maybe, the big question. Especially in the first couple of rounds. It seems to me there's a lot of duds right now yeah. in the NFL. A lot of duds. Um, I would think of the Oakland Raiders being an opponent that we could potentially face right. face off at, at, in a first round, second round type of game, mm -hmm. depending on the seating and all. I like the Oakland Raiders more than the Patriots. Yeah. I do. I think, I mean, there, it seems to me, although there is some, a little separation starting to happen, I, it seems to me they're the only real outstanding team in, in the AFC. Now, that's the defensive side of the ball, okay? We have, there's a lot more things that need to be discussed here, too. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the offense for a second. I think that's the bright spot. I think that Tom Brady is having a fantastic season once again, As playing usual. hurt. Yep. He's got a bad mm -hmm. knee that he's playing yeah. on right now from taking a big hit against the... Uh, 49ers, mm, which okay. was about a week ago. Yeah, and you saw him going out there and blocking for a uh, for for blunt, blunt yesterday. Yeah, that yeah. was funny. I don't <laughs> ever want to see that again, yeah. but that was interesting. Um, but Brady, I think, definitely is in the consideration for MVP. Mm -hmm. I don't know any other player that really deserves it that much. I know you got the Cowboys with Prescott mm -hmm. and Elliott. 
but I think Brady is really making a case that he could very well be a, the MVP of the league. And mm -hmm. how cool would that be? Mm -hmm. um, other bright spots that we have, we just mentioned his name, is uh, LeGarrette Blunt. There's a guy that nobody really expected what he could do this year. He stayed healthy, which I think is the most important thing on why his production's been so good. Um, and, and Deion Lewis coming back. Mm -hmm. I think Deion Lewis being in that backfield for the Patriots is a big boost and a big help. Yeah, I think um, especially if, because he's been, Blunt's been so consistent, especially as Deion Lewis starts to come back to the fold, that'll maybe take some pressure off Tom Brady a little bit and yep. allow him to, I mean, he's had a great season, but he's still Well, you still saw yesterday that they were using James White and, Legar and um, Deion Lewis quite a bit. Mm -hmm. You know, Blunt was coming in for those runs when they needed him to be there as, um, as well. But I think that that's part of the game plan that they want to use a little bit more of, is yeah. getting those two guys specifically involved more. Yeah, makes sense. Um, Julian Edelman, what do you think? From an outsider's know. perspective. He's always, he seems like the typical patriot to me, the new Wes Welker. Yep. I haven't paid too much attention in the last couple of games. He also, I know he's been hurt a little bit the last couple of years, but he always, from an outsider, he seems like a typical, typical patriot. For me, Julian Edelman is, I feel, Tom Brady's most trusted receiver. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's without saying, basically. Yeah. Um, my, here's my issue is he's been taking so many hits throughout his career. Mm. Yeah. I, I think that you're starting to see the downfall of Julian Edelman a little bit here. Yeah, maybe. Only, he really only has hit the end zone twice this whole the season. season. Wow. This whole mm. season. He's basically the guy that's going to get you that third down, you know, third down and 10. Right. Brady's going to look for him potentially... Mm -hmm. Um, you know, for the most part, looking for him to get that clutch play that's needed. Mm -hmm. I think another problem is defense, you know, defensive side of the ball with, with defenses. They, they match up pretty nicely with Edelman. They can kind of shut him down. Uh -huh. So I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, if Gronk's playing on the field, you know, when Edelman's there, you'll probably be able to see him catch the ball a little bit more. Mm -hmm. If Gronk is not there, if he's not on the field, Edelman is just shuts down. Mm -hmm. Because teams just all right, just we're just going to cover. It. We're going to yeah. focus all on Edelman, mm -hmm. and nobody else particularly is open. Minus a very big other surprise that's been Malcolm Mitchell. Mm -hmm. Malcolm Mitchell has been excellent for yeah. Brady. Um, he's been going to him for the past two games now, pretty consistently, mm -hmm. um, and getting you know some big plays. I think Malcolm Mitchell has developed into a, a very good receiver. Mm -hmm. Patriots could use um, as a threat as well. Now that's. The offensive side, we talked about defense, we've talked about offense, special teams. Special teams needs a mention because I said probably about a month ago, maybe longer, mm -hmm. we will never talk about Steven Gostowski's struggle again on Face the Facts. I'm wrong. Oops. <laughs> um, uh, um, it's kind of sickening to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where, what are the Patriots going to do with this? This is a big problem right now. Big problem. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of surprising, to me at least, because you thought that, yeah, sure, a lot of kickers were struggling this year. Yeah. I think two weeks ago, they had like 12 missed extra points in the whole in the league, which was like the most in history. Yeah. Um, but I thought that he would kind of get it back together in the last month or two of the season, but it hasn't happened. He is a head case right yeah. now. I mean, if they don't get that last touch on yesterday, that missed field goal, that, that could be the game. Yeah, you're yeah, very I mean, right. That, that was, it was cl that close. You're very right. Um, it's been Steven Gostowski's worst season as, mm -hmm. a, as a kicker. I think a lot of it has to do with the kickers being moved back more mm -hmm. with um, doing the extra points. We've seen a staggering amount of missed extra points this year. But the field goal, that's the thing that, that sticks to me the most. Field goals, that's something that he was automatic with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 50 yards plus, boom, right down the middle, done. He didn't miss the extra point yesterday. He missed the field goal. And when stuff like that happens... That tells me that there's more going on in his head hmm. than, we, than fans probably ever thought. So yeah. my question here is, can the Patriots survive with Kostowski missing field goals and extra points every game? Uh, I'd, I mean, probably not, but yeah. I, I don't – I'm not at the point – it's worry, worrisome, but I'm not at the point yet where I'm going to say – yeah, he's he's he can't like he's not going to be a major contributor mm -hmm. in the stretch run in the playoffs. Got to figure. I mean, it's it out. concerning, but yeah, and he needs to figure it out. But I yeah. I don't think I'm ready to say okay, they 
they have to move on or they need to figure something else out because right. he's not going to help out. Well, I think that's a valid point. I definitely do. Now, if anybody follows me on Facebook, I put out an interesting debatable question yesterday, and it really got a lot of fans and friends and family mm -hmm. all, all, in a, all in a flurry. Because I asked this question, okay? I was watching the game, and I got frustrated at one particular player on the Patriots um, for, once again, getting hurt. That is Rob Gronkowski. Hmm. I'm sick and tired of it. My question here is simple. Should the Patriots think about trading Gronkowski at some point, whether I it's during, this, during next year, off season? Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? I don't think, I don't think it's outlandish. I mean, I okay. think sometimes, at least from, again, from an outside perspective, yeah. Rob Gronkowski in this region is kind of like... He's a god. He's kind of like the golden calf. Where like, yeah. I mean, you can't talk negatively about him. But he has, I mean, he has flaws. I mean, it's, one of them is staying on the field, and, at least the last couple of years. So I think it's... Yep. And I think the way Bill Belichick, to me, has handled his job as GM and head coach, mm -hmm. it's not out of the realm of possibility that he would think about that. That's exactly I, I right. Because I think that's something that yep. he would do and he's shown to do, yep. I mean, in the past. Healthy Gronk. One of the best tight ends ever. But here's the problem. He's never healthy. Mm -hmm. It's a back one week. It's an ankle the next week. It's a leg. It's an arm. It's a head. It's a shoulder. Well, Can you just wrap him in bubble wrap during the game? I think the question becomes, is his time in the field worth the time that he's not there? Like, does he hurt them when he's not there more so than him being on the field? Did you hear at the end of the first half... What Belichick said to the reporter, I believe it was Jamie Erdahl from CBS. No, I didn't. What did, what did he say? She asked, Gronkowski coming back in the next half. He goes, we're used to him getting, we're just used to this. <laughs> we're used to this. Well, I mean, that, it's true. That really opened, yeah. I, I'm like, did he just say that? Especially in front of the press. Yeah. That told me, and he never does that. Yeah. Never. Mm -hmm. That tells me that he's just about had it. Mm -hmm. So, Fans, I'm just telling you right now, do not be surprised if he's not here next season. Just don't be. Because I think everybody here in New England has just about had it. Get yourself healthy, get yourself on the field, and enough getting hurt. I'm sorry. You think the Patriots fan is feeling I as think Patriots fans have this. probably yeah. had about enough after mm -hmm. today. Huh. I do. I mean, maybe you're sharing, maybe you're not. Maybe you're saying, oh, it is what it is. Get him healthy for the postseason. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's true. Every single game. There is something with this guy getting hurt. Seems like it. And it's just at the point where I'm just saying to myself, you know what? Go and get yourself a first-round pick. Mm -hmm. Go and get it because that might be the best-case scenario on what they should do. Mm -hmm. Maybe you go out and find the you know, Rob Gronkowski 2.0. I mean, I think you'll find someone to take a chance on. Yeah. I mean, well, not even take a chance because he's shown he can be great on the field. Yeah. But because the Patriots have a – up close view about it. Yeah. You know, they're more likely to trade him. But other teams may just see, look, this guy's great. We gotta we gotta take it. Right. We might give up more. So up next for the Patriots, they will have the uh, the uh, Rams, the LA Rams. I was saying St. Louis. It's yeah. the LA well, Rams well, now. Hold on a second. <laughs> that is at Gillette Stadium. That's a one o'clock game for next week. Mm -hmm. Um and then pretty much we were looking at the schedule a little bit off air and we said probably Denver's our probably our toughest game coming up. Mm -hmm. Um which will be right around Christmas time. Um, we'll play the Jets again, Christmas Eve. That's Saturday. We mm -hmm. already discussed that off air, too. It's Saturday, 1 mm -hmm. o'clock. Um, and hopefully they can get healthy and get to the postseason again. Yeah. That's the game plan. See, the question for me, and maybe you could speak more to this, I'm yeah. watching them year after year. Does this year seem different than other years where they've kind of, you know, walked or struggled to the, through, the, through the season and then, you know, made it far in the playoffs? Or is this, is this like that? Or is this different where you think, okay, they don't have enough even to go to go deep, right? Because if we look at only this year, yeah, there are some things that don't seem to par mm -hmm. for them. But has this happened in the past frequently, or is this kind of a starting to kind of collapse the dynasty a little bit? I I think that what you see right now is it's never going to end when Brady is the quarterback. Yeah, it's never mm -hmm. going to end right there. I think what you'll see is. The Patriots being a dominant force until he retires. I do. You know, I think we saw with Garoppolo, even when he was there, I think we'll have a little bit more of a, con a continuation of success mm -hmm. as 
Garoppolo is handed the torch or whoever the next quarterback may be. It might not be Garoppolo. Mm -hmm. Who knows? But Brady definitely has a lot more games in his He's career it, yeah. than I think mm -hmm. a lot of people expected. So I'm liking where, where, where they are. I mm -hmm. think there, there's no problem with how the team looks. It's just they got to get rid of these stupid injuries. They got to get healthy. They got to fix their defense, and then hopefully they'll be okay. Mm -hmm. Anything else in the NFL that stood out to you yesterday besides the Patriots? Are there any other games that deserve a mention or discussion? Um, caught the end of the um, Denver Kansas City yes. game last Went night. Went to overtime. That was exciting. Um, yeah, oh, I, I caught it. I caught the end of regulation. Okay. When Kansas City tied it, up and then but I didn't catch overtime. I didn't see who won. But okay. Um, those two teams are co sort of jockeying. Um, a lot of teams for those two wild card spots. Yep. Especially in the AFC because everyone's kind of still around 500. I don't want to see Denver there. I just don't. Mm -hmm. I, Denver is a team the Patriots just don't match up well against, especially mm -hmm. if they have to go to Denver. Right. So I would like to see Denver out of the equation. Much rather see Kansas City. Um, I think that you might be able. We might be able to see that. We might be able to. Yeah. Miami won again. We've talked yeah, about Miami that. Miami is a team that's to been. Separate themselves. Yeah. It's almost like the rebirth of Miami. Mm -hmm. um, they are a very good football team right now, and it's something that the Patriots should uh, make sure they're prepared for because they have to play them towards the end of the season yeah. again. Mm -hmm. So that's something they should uh, try their best to make sure they match up well against and mm -hmm. beat the stuffing out of them. Yeah. No pun intended from the Thanksgiving. And it weekend. is it's interesting to see both the Raiders and the Cowboys so far have a really good record. Yep. Now, whether that success translates I, I to the really playoffs, like I don't the, know yet. I really but like it, it the Cowboys. Yeah. Ezekiel Elliott just cannot be stopped. Mm -hmm. He is a beast. He's got that really quick burst of speed that he can't, that opposing teams just can't defend. Yeah. I like, uh, I think Prescott's a little overrated, to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. I do. Um, but I think he's winning, which helps Dallas. Um, I like Romo better than Prescott, but that's just my personal opinion. Yeah. I think you'll see Romo go with another team in the in the uh, off season. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But good, you know, for Dallas, I, I'm happy to see them there. I, they're they're yeah. a pretty good team. Yeah, their offensive um, line. The is one really thing I just don't like is Jerry Jones. I don't like their <laughs> owner. I just don't. Mm -hmm. So I think that it, it's nice to see other teams that haven't been there in a while. Yeah. Like an Oakland, like a Cowboy, mm -hmm. like even Kansas City, kind of in this. Mm -hmm. So it'll be good. Yeah. Um. Transitioning over to the next sport, we're going to talk about the Bruins here for a second. Um, the Bruins have been, I think, nothing but disappointing. I think that this is exactly what you expected before the season started. They're a team that lacks the defense. They lack big scoring. They've been hurt. They haven't really been healthy much. They lost out on Jimmy Vesey, which is something um, that I think that would have helped this mm -hmm. team. He was a North Reading native. That's why I mentioned mm -hmm. him. Oh, okay. Um, cool. Where do the Bruins go from here? Where do they go? Because I don't even think they can make the playoffs with this roster they have right now. It seems pretty similar to the last two years where they just, you yeah. know, they were mediocre, couldn't get a lot of secondary scoring, and they were losing games 2-1, 3-2. Yep. And then they just didn't, they fell too short of the playoffs. I mean, to me, that's what it looks like so far. Mm -hmm. It's a long season, so it, it, does, it just doesn't seem like they've made – to me, a big enough change for them to convince people and themselves that they can kind of get back to the fold and be competitive in the playoffs. Is anybody blamed particularly for this? I, it doesn't seem it, – it seems like a I collective – I go to the top. I I, to yeah, because yeah, you could start there. I mean, because that's where the changes come from. So here's my next roster. question. If you have to improve the Bruins, how do you improve them? Well, I'll tell you number one. Cam Neely. Cam Neely is a horrendous – president of operations for the Bruins. Mm. I could be wrong. I just don't. They don't have it. They just don't. Bergeron's getting another year old. Mm -hmm. Chara is hurt. That's a big loss. And Chara is still being counted on as a number one defense at about 40 years old. That just is not, that's just not right. It's just not it's right. Hard, it's hard to survive yeah. in the NHL. Like Very that. hard. Yeah. Very hard to survive. Mm -hmm. So you're an Islanders fan. How are mm -hmm. your Islanders doing? Uh, well, they have a spot at the bottom of the Eastern Conference. Oh. So they're... <laughs> They are having a very, very underwhelming season. I mean, it to me, this is what it is. If you don't have, which they don't, a secondary scoring depth mm -hmm. or any scoring depth and a dom or a dominant goalie, to me, if you have one of those things, you can be good and survive, and they don't have, they don't have it. I mean, you can go back to what they did in the offseason. 
players just not performing, but to me that's what the story seems like for them. Right. Yeah. And I mean, there are a lot of team, league's pretty competitive this year. A lot of a lot of teams who haven't been that good are mm-hmm. starting to move their way. Any up team the pack that surprises you the most? Um, no, I I kind of always look at those. To me, I always look at those Western Canadian teams. Yeah. Because especially after last year, um, all the Canadian no Canadian teams made the playoffs. Right. Like it was it was all American teams. Mm-hmm. So I was I. I always look at the Canadians because they're a prime case of they live and die with Carey Price. Yeah, they do. If I mean, look at the beginning of last year. They they started as good as they started now, and then he got hurt for the season, and they just they fell they off. They tanked. Yeah. yeah, but this year they're doing. I mean, them in the in Ottawa. I'm interested to see where they they two go at the top of the Atlantic yeah. because Bruins um, just lost to them recently. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Um, um, Western Conference seems pretty pretty normal, um, yeah. but. I, I don't watch them regularly, so it's, it's hard to know exactly what, what the dynamic of those teams is like. Mm-hmm. Well, we wish uh, the Bruins the best. We hope they mm-hmm. uh, get better. That's obviously the biggest thing for them. And uh, stay tuned because, you really, hockey's kind of just warming up. Yeah, so, yeah long season. Long season for mm-hmm. hockey coming up. Another team that started, Boston Celtics. Going to continue on the struggle path. The Celtics have been... A very, I think they've been more disappointing than the Bruins. Mm. I really do. And a lot of it had to do with, you know, sorry, green teamers. You just were all over this. Al Horford's coming. We're going to be this awesome team, compete with the Cavs, yada, 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 yada. Well, guess what? Your team stinks. (laughs) Their defense is horrible. This is a team that was, that kind of, from the last couple of years under Brad Stevens' system, has just been so defensive oriented. They've been it come, able to come up with the big plays, been able to just really take over games and be a pretty pretty cool team to follow mm-hmm. and watch. Yeah, been right now, yeah. I would not recommend to anybody to really watch this team, and mm-hmm. it's very disappointing to say that. Um, Al Horford's been out from a concussion. It's amazing though, since he's been back, they've been much better together. Mm. So Horford, I don't see as the big problem. Do I think he's overrated as a player? Yeah, I really do. But I think some of the, some of the things that the Celtics got to work on better is their team defense mm-hmm. and just not giving up. I know when they played Golden State, which is about a week ago, yeah, right. they completely gave up. You know, they had it to about eight points, and Brad Stevens just said, you know, Isaiah, you're sitting down. Mm. We're sitting down all these guys. Just let them win. That is such a bad message bad message to show you give all your effort no matter what it is Mm -hmm. go out there and try to win a game so overall my thoughts uh, i'm actually thinking about is this could brad stevens actually get fired during this season and that's sickening to say that but again it's open for debate Mm -hmm. what do you see on the celtics i i expected them to well to me this is what i thought at the beginning of the season i thought okay they got Al Horford, another good player. They have a good core, and they have Brad Stevens. So to me, I was looking for them to, in order for them to show me that they're serious, to take at least another big step, Yep. which means winning up a round or two of the playoffs this year and getting probably higher than the 7 or 8 seed because you don't want to face the Cavs. No. Part of the reason I think that is because the Eastern Conference is still, I mean, the last couple of years have been weak besides the Cavs and uh, maybe the, the Bulls or the Hawks or something. But even this year, the Cavs are the only team so far that has kind of pushed – Push the top. It stood out. Everyone is between mm-hmm. three and four above 500. Right. The rest, of, the rest of the standings in the conference. Yep. So to me, that's why I thought. That's why I was kind of expecting them to take another step, even though we were talking about it off air, how they don't have a major star, and maybe yep. that's it. Because because the, the NBA, this is kind of how to me, this is how the league seems to be working. Kevin Maybe's Durant, we're on this team right now. Change the whole complexion of yeah. the team. Mm-hmm. Who, you, you, who you can go to at the end of the game and always rely on to make a big basket and score 8 well, or 10 in the you fourth just, quarter. If your team in the NBA does not have a superstar on it, you're Stop done. To win. Yeah. You're done. To win. And I just don't mm-hmm. see them being able to win or do really much of anything with the roster that they have right now. Yeah. They have got to go and get somebody big. Now the question is, can they do that? I think the only reason, the only way they're going to compete is if they get a big, a big player. Mm. Can they at the trade deadline or at some point during the season right now Go and get somebody. They Do seem, we know of anybody available? They seem prime for a move like that. I know they have had a ton of draft picks in the past couple of years. Maybe they have more coming up. I don't know mm-hmm. really who'd be available. It's kind of distant. We have a little distance between now and the trade deadline. Um, but, you know, there's always these teams that I feel like there's a lot of talk about 
stars in the NBA whose teams are not doing so well and you know possibly mm-hmm. going to get traded in the middle of the season. I, to me, right. it doesn't seem doesn't seem to happen that often. At least middle of season trades in the NBA, but you never know. Going to wrap up our show today with a prediction cat uh, prediction corner. We're going to mm-hmm. call it. Um, these are could be true false answers. They could be a fill in the blank. Uh, you can try your best at home to fill in those answers or statements we have the best that you can. So before we wrap it up, our first one we have, where do we see the Patriots falling at the end of the season? I think at least to the AFC Championship game again. I I don't know if they'll go past that, but I think at least there. I think we'll see the Patriots against Oakland. I think Oakland will get the upper hand. That's just what I'm seeing right Mm -hmm. now. That could change. Um, We both are pretty much in agreement on that. How about Tom Brady as an MVP for our second one? Uh, Yeah. Yeah, like I said, I, I think with the the level of play, at least at the individual players, kind of mirrors mm-hmm. that of the quality of the league in the sense that there aren't right. a lot of dominating presences to me. So Tom Brady, would, to me, is sense. the MVP. I mean, he has just come out and just shown that he is not old. <laughs> he <laughs> wants to certainly get a championship once again. He's the heartbeat of the Patriots. Mm-hmm. What else is new? I mean, it's the same yeah. exact thing. Yep. I mean, very Another, yeah. easy. The Bruins will blank at the end of the season. Uh, not make the playoffs. Not make the playoffs. I like that answer. I like that answer. Bruins will crash and burn at the end of the season. <laughs> I was wondering answer. what you were going for there. Yeah. <laughs> if they're not going to already do so already. But crash and burn is how I fill that in. Brad Stevens for number four will be blanked by the Celtics. Uh, and we're a PG show, so you need to fill that in properly. <laughs> Continued or extended? I don't. What, extended. Is, is his contract okay. expiring? Is that? Or um, is it, it, it's close. Okay. He needs an yeah. extension, I think. Um, if they don't, if they don't take another step, I don't think they extend him. But I think they, they don't, they don't fire him. To me. I'm gonna fill my blank in as talk too harshly by the Celtics. That could hmm. be Danny Ainge. That could be Wynn Grosbeck, who was a manager there. He's got to get the best out of his players. I mean, I like Brad Stevens, but. Your coach is only as good as your players. If your mm-hmm. players aren't producing, then you're not going to be there as the coach. Yeah. So talk too harshly is how I fill that answer in. The last one, this is an interesting one. Josh McDaniels will take over the Patriots as head coach next season. False. Okay. Belichick stays, huh? It's hard for me to believe as long as he wants to coach that anyone else is going to coach that yeah. team. I think Belichick still has some more years that he wants to do. Mm-hmm. And I think personally Belichick wants to stay and see how the team will do without Tom Brady when he yeah. hangs it up. Mm-hmm. So I think we might see Belichick for another maybe five, ten years, which would be pretty cool. Yeah, it's impressive. Any other things to discuss before we wrap it up? Um, nope. I just this next. I think this next month, especially after getting you know New Year's and after, obviously the NFL is going to end. So we'll see what will happen there. But also there's there'll be a little more separation, I think with the NHL and the NBA yeah. in terms of, especially, to me, especially with the Bruins and Celtics. Like, I think we'll have a better idea of how the year is going to go in it's four It's so six fresh. Weeks. I mean, yes, we've had, I've had some interesting opinions. You've mm-hmm. had your opinions as well. It's very fresh. So maybe by the turn of the new year, we might have a different yeah. side of uh, a different change mm-hmm. on how we feel about these teams. Brad, thank you again for joining us on Face the Facts. Thanks very as much. As always, thank you for allowing us into your homes here in North Reading. We will see you soon. I am Nick Face. See you later.